Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Miami Dolphins franchise. We just finished the trade deadline episode, and at the end of that episode, we ended up trading away Devontae Parker. And who does he go to? Well, the team we're facing next in the Houston Texans, a team that has made a ton of trades. And remember, they traded away their star receiver, DeAndre Hopkins. They're, I think they're still searching for that number one spot, that guy that can take over there. They do have Brandon Cooks, but I think Parker will also ascend as the number one in Houston. As long as uh, kind of, you know, they keep that Deshaun Watson type of offense intact. If they lose him, they're in trouble. We have a ton of free agents come next year, and this is why one of the reasons I chose the Dolphins, because we could go a lot of directions with this team, a lot of free agents here. As you can just see, I mean, even backup quarterback we have to decide on. We have no guarantees going into next year. The reason why I haven't extended anybody is because production has really been down this year, especially with our pass rush like Emmanuel Agba. Nine sacks last year, his first year in Miami. Only three so far. I definitely want to see an uptick in that category because if I do want to keep him, he's got to make a difference. I think it's just a matter of time before Mike Gusecki gets his, though. I think I'm just going to wait a little bit, but... So far, he has no touchdowns, 31 receptions, 341 yards, but that doesn't bother me at all. I know what he can do. I know how special he is. We're going to get him locked up sooner or later. Now, Miles Gaskin has struggled this season. You saw last episode, he had three fumbles in this game, three, and it resulted in two turnovers, and this is just something that just can't happen. Gaskin is a very athletic running back. He is a very good third down back, in my opinion. I'm not sure he's an every down back, at least for this team. So I'm going to have to make a change here. And we have one win on the season. We're searching for our second. Some things just have to change if, you know, we're not getting the wins we want. And Terrence Pitt Howard is a power back, but I am just willing to give him a shot at least a few games of a stretch here to kind of show what he has so he will get the start today versus the texans now the texans have the number 28 ranked pass offense and the reason why i traded Devonte parker to them is because i knew this fact i knew this would be a realistic trade because they need something to help out their passing game they are pretty decent on defense though they are right in the middle of the league so we will see what we can do against them i'm hoping that we can do a good mix of run and pass today a lot of play action i want to see that going but i did definitely want to see our young guys really take over here as we move into the second half of the year because i need somebody to ascend from the pack and right now on the offensive side you really see a big ascension for Jay jalen waddle i mean he has been our star of our offense but I definitely want to see somebody maybe on our offensive line ascend, and I don't know. Our offensive line right now is a mess. Well, Jason Sanders is actually the number two kicker in the game. At least we don't have to worry about kicker. He is very good at 85 overall. He's also very young, which kind of means that we're going to have to give him a good contract if he doesn't already have one. I haven't even checked. Christian Wilkins is just going to have to step up. I need him to step up. Raekwon Davis has been doing pretty well. So I need to see Christian Wilkins also step up along with him. Jalen Phillips is the rookie out of Miami. He is supposed to be our star pass rusher. Now going into next season, I have no idea what defense we're going to run. So he could transition to end. But right now, I haven't seen too much of an impact from him. Alana Roberts is a fan favorite from the Miami Dolphins fan base, and I have been following them kind of closely the last like week or so in real life, and I found out that Roberts is a guy that I should get some playing time to. He's an older veteran, but very well liked in the community. Mike Gusecki gets an upgrade here. One thing I like about upgrading tight ends is that when you upgrade them, it pretty much upgrades everything. He goes plus two and change of direction, which is also pretty awesome. I'm hoping to make him into an elite tight end. He already is pretty good. So let's see what he does today. We do return home. Miami was one of the teams that was listed on Deshaun Watson's list. So we will see what happens today as he does come out here as the starting quarterback of the Texans here in Madden. I'm, I don't think he will be the starting quarterback for the Texans in real life. So we'll see what happens with Watson. So here we go. 
Here we go on defense. Raekwon Davis fresh off of that superstar trait now. And here is the first pass of the game. Deep shot. Xavier Howard in coverage over Devontae Parker. That one will be knocked away by Howard. Already testing Howard on the right side. That's not a good recipe, but already going to his new target. Here's the second pass of the game. Going to Parker. He wants to get him confidence in this offense already. Watson completes that one. So first and 10 now at the 32. Here's a deep shot again, the third one. Here is a breakup that time. Byron Jones with good coverage over Brandon Cooks. Parker lined up in the slot this time for a second and 10. And there is Raekwon Davis getting to the quarterback. Take a look at Raekwon just absolutely destroy the right guard on this play. And this is what I have wanted, a player to really ascend. And Raekwon Davis has definitely shown that he can play. Third and 10, quick throw. David Johnson tackled by Agba. And we finally get a stop. It feels good. So here is Tua now under center to start out this game, handing off to at least the temporary new starting running back, and that is going to be Terrence Pitt Howard picking up a gain of three. Play action fake to the undrafted rookie this time. Tua throws to the right sideline, and an excellent catch on the sideline by Jalen Waddle. He does lead the NFL in uh, receiving yards so far. That is a first down. Not far off from the touchdown lead as well as here's a handoff. That is TPH. He can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 10 now at the 39. Here is Tua in the pocket, throwing to the right side. Will Fuller has it, but not enough for the first down. At the 32, just on the outside of field goal range, just at the edge, is now we go for it here. Fourth and three, quick throw, Fuller. He does pick up the first down just in front of it. So here we go under center now to a second and nine throw into the sideline and it's picked off. Gasecki had inside position, but for some reason he did not jump up for that. Kenny Vaccaro was actually behind him. If Gasecki would have went up and at least tried to tip it or anything, that wouldn't have been an interception, but now Houston takes back over. So here they are running the ball. This time, Raekwon Davis. Man, he is a monster. We've seen it the last couple of games. That's his first tackle. That one is a loss of three for Phillip Lindsay. Third and five, quick throw. And that's Byron Jones in coverage, and he allows Brandon Cooks to get that one for a first down. I thought that one could have been a pick six, possibly. This drive continues now at the 33. Here is Watson, and he goes down. That time we send the pressure. Emmanuel Agba is there. Andrew Van Ginkle wasn't far off as well as that brings up a second and 15. Screen pass, a perfect play call, and that one goes to Phillip Lindsay, getting back about nine yards or so. So at the 37 now, a third and six throw across the middle that is caught. Another first down for Watson as that is Justin Coleman getting beat once again. Quick throw now. Here is going to be another gain of about nine yards, bringing it for up to a second and one. That is the first catch by Anthony Miller getting traded from the Bears. Play action fake, throwing to the right side. Parker has it, this time being guarded by Byron Jones. That's not Parker. That is Chris Conley who beats Byron Jones. Inside the red zone now, just at the 16-yard line under center as we start the second quarter. Play action fake now. This is going to be caught, and that is Jordan Akins. Touchdown. And our secondary is very, very good in this game, but for some reason they don't translate it to the field. It's 7-0 here for Houston on the road. So here we go to a back out onto the field. Play action fake throwing. He's got blockers, and that's Waddle who makes a move. He picks up the first down and a little bit more. Gain of 16. You know he is shifty. He has that superstar ability, which allows him to not lose speed when he does catch the ball. So here is Terrence Spit Howard handoff up the middle. He's been bottled up so far on just five carries. So it brings it to a third and two. Here is TPH, and he fights for. The first down, that's a gain of three yards. The undrafted rookie out of Charlotte has been bottled up so far, but I think he'll start to get going. 
So here we go. Second and six. Throw to the sideline. There is TPH. He breaks the tackle on the sideline and picks up a first down to about the 30-yard line. He is a power back, but he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He doesn't have that huge top end speed. That's why we need Gaskin still to help out. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is Will Fuller looking for a new contract. He picks up the first down as well. Looks like we are in a goal line package, and here is a handoff and TPH, his biggest run of the game. I knew it wouldn't be long until he busted a big one. That is going to be a 16-yard gain. Second and one, handoff, TPH, and he will fight in. Nice long drive by the Dolphins. That feels good. And we do tie this game up at seven apiece. So here we go back on a defense. Handoff, Phillip Lindsay goes down, and guess who? Raekwon Davis again. Superstar trade has really ac accelerated his development and helped out his game. Phillip Lindsay on a toss play. He does pick up maybe a couple of yards, getting back to about a third and nine, third and ten scenario at the 48. Watson throws and a stop again. Great play by the rookie Javon Holland, staying true to his man. And now we have a chance to take the lead before halftime. So here is Tua now in the shotgun, throwing to the right side. Gesicki beats the man coverage, beating Justin Reed, picking up the first down. So here we go now at our own 23. Tua in the pocket. He gets tripped. It's picked up by the Texans. Touchdown. A strip sack on Tua. And now just like that, trying to put together a two-minute drill. And Tua gets stripped. And that is the left tackle, Austin Jackson, the second-year pro out of USC, who absolutely gets abused. And it is now 14 to seven. So now we have a second chance at this two minute drill as here's a quick throw and that is Preston Williams. He has a first down. Two and now first and 10 once again and the pressure is there with it. This time we got rid of it and that one falls incomplete. At the 37 now the pressure just gets to us quickly. Here's a quick throw to the left side and that one will be Gasicki again. And he gets across the 50-yard line. This time, 22 seconds left and counting. We have two timeouts left. Tua trying to buy some time and throwing. Deflected. 11 seconds left here in the first half. Tua again throws. He's got Gesicki. Five seconds remaining. They call the timeout. And this one will be about a 53-yarder. Jason Sanders comes in and knocks it down. And it is now a four-point deficit going into halftime. Definitely not what I imagined there to end the first half, but we did come away with some points. So looking around the division, the Patriots are four and four. They take on the Panthers, who we will face in about three weeks. And then here are, is Atlanta and the Saints in an NFC South matchup. Jameis Winston has led the Saints to a five and two record so far. So we begin the second half with possession now, down by four. Here is a quick throw, and that is Jalen Waddle. Want to get the short passing game going in this second half. As now we hand off, TPH, big hole. And he has good vision, great block that time, and that one will be a first down carry close to the 50-yard line. Terrence Pittahauer with about five yards of carry. Here's a pump draw play up the middle when he picks up. About a gain of seven. Now he's starting to wear down this defense. Second and three now. Tua Gaskin checks in. You got to hold on to the football with him. And he does pick up the first down. A gain of six. So we're moving the ball here on this first opening drive of the second half. Here is Tua again in the pocket. Open man. That's Fuller. He's getting open and picks up the first down. One thing I want to do with Fuller is really just advance his route running because in man coverage, that's where he struggles. Third and 22, this time throwing, overthrowing Jalen Waddle. We had a third and long after a penalty. It brought it to a third and 22, and it will be a long field goal, knocked down, but down by one now as Deshaun Watson comes back out onto the field. So here they are at their own 25. Quick that. throw, it's picked off. Jerome Baker has it. He's got space and gets back to the 21. 
Jerome Baker has been quiet this the last like five or six games. He had a good start to the season, but then all of a sudden went quiet, and he does pick up his first interception of the year. So here is Tua now on the next drive, running this one. You forget that Tua has speed. We don't take off with him much, but he picks up the first down. At the 10 now, here is TPH cutting back, and he reaches for the goal line, and he gets stopped at the one. Second and goal now, Terrence Pitt Howard. Touchdown, his fifth of the season. And that one will give us the lead as we do line up for a two-point conversion. TPH in the backfield this time. Tua throws to the sideline. It's picked off. This one will be housed for a two-point conversion the other way. You've got to be kidding me. We just can't catch a break. It is now 19 to 16. Well, Houston gets a point out of that drive. What do you know? And they have possession. Here's a quick throw, and that one is caught. And that one will be a first down by Cooks. So first and 10 now at the 36. This time Deshaun Watson avoids a sack and takes off. A huge gain for him. Raquan Davis almost had the sack, or was that Ogba? I don't know. It's a first down. I believe that was Davis. Here is a handoff. Once again, David Johnson, a big hole. That's his longest run of the day. Only a second carry as well as they have been splitting with Philip Lindsay and David Johnson. So they get it to the 20 now, third and five. The pressure does get to him. Davis forces Watson to throw this one away. So they do settle for three to tie this game up now, and we're going to have to go at it here in the fourth quarter. As now we get it to a third and eight. Tua's got to convert on this one, keeping this drive alive. And here he is in the shotgun. They send the cover zero, and it's almost picked off. That's what I talk about. Will Fuller just does not create separation on his routes, only the crossing routes he does. So back on the next possession, the first pass is Devontae Parker off to the races. He beats Justin Coleman in coverage. Touchdown. You've got to be kidding me. Right away in man coverage beating Coleman. And what was who was that in coverage? That was Jason McCourty, I believe, that had the safety help, and he was nowhere to be found. So now we're down by seven, and we have a lot of field to make up here. We have about 80 yards to go here, just about six and a half minutes to go. Here is Will Fuller with a catch, and he picks up about a gain of four yards. But we're already across the 50 now. Here's a play action fake in the shotgun this time. Tua under pressure. It gets to him. It's a sack. Austin Jackson and our right tackle, Josh Jones, both allowed their pass rushers to get in to hit Tua. So now here we go. Here is Tua throwing across the middle on a third and long, and that one will be knocked away. And now we have to punt that one. And now here comes Houston back out onto the field. Here is Deshaun throwing. He missed a man, and we luck out on that throw. So here is Deshaun Watson in the pocket. Now a third and ten. Rolls out to left. Throws quickly, and he finds Phillip Lindsay. That one will be caught, but a third down stop. So just about five minutes left here in this game. Can we put together one last drive here. Here's Gaskin, his fifth carry of the game. Picks up a few yards. Second and eight now. Tua has time. He airs it out. Goes deep to Preston Williams. Knocked away. Justin Reed playing good coverage. As that brings it to a third and eight. Here is Tua airing it out. He's got Waddle, and he's got him. Perfect throw by Tua finding his favorite target this season. And that is Jalen Waddle, the rookie. He's definitely gunning for rookie of the year. I think there's no question he's going to get it. So here we go at the 18. Handoff, Terrence Pitt Howard. Good block by Eichenberg as that picks up a gain of five. Second and five throw to Kasicki inside the five now. It's now goal to go. Here we are at the three. Throwing to the sideline. Touchdown. Nice string of throws by Tua. It results in a touchdown to Miles Gaskin. And he does get in and ties this game up at 26 apiece. 
So here we go now. Can we come up with a defensive stop? And there is a great start. That's Emmanuel Agba sealing the edge. So just about at the two-minute warning now. It's a third and six. Watson, open man. It's Jordan Aikens with space. Justin Coleman gets beat again, this time by a tight end. Not even a top ten tight end in the NFL nonetheless. And now they continue this drive now inside of a, about a minute and 15 seconds left here in this game. Handoff, Phillip Lindsay on a third and four. We do stop him, and we call the timeout. So now Houston goes up by three. We have about a minute left. Two timeouts. Tua moving to left side, throwing, and he's got Waddle on the sideline. Great catch, and it is a first down. So now at the 46-yard line, here is Tua now. They send the pressure quick. Throw it, it's picked off. He was looking for Gasicki, and that one will be a pick six. Oh, my goodness. Let's just take a look at this play. Desmond King goes all the way, and what a way to go down. We saw this linebacker running over to get Gesicki, but he just suddenly stopped. We thought it was man coverage. Instead, it was a zone. Wow. So we're down by 10 now, and here is Tua dropping back way too far, getting hit on that throw, and it is picked off. That will be the game. The Houston Texans defeat Miami on the road, keeping us at one win on the season. This season has just not gone the way we have liked. 36 to 26. Seven games was our season goal, and it looks like our chances of getting that are very, very slim. Terrence Pitt Howard did have two touchdowns in his second game starting this season. Jalen Waddle went for 146 off of eight receptions. Will Fuller was kind of quiet, five for 36. We tried to spread the ball a little bit, even giving, getting a couple of throws to Preston Williams, but he just could not hang on to a couple of passes. But then Austin Jackson had an absolutely terrible game. I did edit in a lot of the a lot of the plays where he did allow pressure, but it was a lot more than I actually edited in. There was some plays that I was like, man, I can't even throw the football. Like it's just getting in there right away. And that's why on that last pass at the end of the game, we, we just get paranoid. We start dropping back entirely too far, and that's what happens. I just get paranoid in the pocket because I know how bad our offensive line is. Once we get a better offensive line, I'm going to be more in the pocket. We won't roll out as much, but with games like that, it's definitely tough. So now we move into next week where we face Lamar Jackson. And in this game, we will play the moments. So I will have some episodes where I do have double headers where we play a full game, play the moments, or I might play all of the moments. Who knows? But we'll see if we can stop Lamar Jackson and his legs. We have to hold him to under 75 yards rushing. And we get plus five in play recognition this week. So hopefully that will help us on the defensive side. We are 1-8, but we do have some good news going into this week. Terrence Pitt Howard has a upgrade opportunity. So after his second game starting, he has to get two-plus touchdowns or 100 yards rushing and receiving, and he will go up to star dev. Right now, he is sitting here at normal dev. He is 21 years old as a rookie, only 62 overall. But with some development, I love player development in my series. If you're new to my channel, I love it. I don't care about overalls right now unless you just suck. But I want to see if we can just develop this back. He is a power back. He is different from the backs we have on our team. So we will see. The other offensive players that we really, really have on our team and really, really the only sure guy that I would say he is going to be a 100% part of our future. Gesicki's like 90%, but Jalen Waddle's having an excellent season. You know, his uh, ability here, I never showed his superstar ability. It is the ability to kind of catch and run and not lose any speed. So we will keep that on him. You can modify those, but his makes sense. So we will keep it on him. Tua so far has 11 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Definitely not the season that I've been hoping to have with him, 
But a lot of the credit of his interceptions, I go to the offensive line. We, they are just absolutely terrible. And honestly, rule, I mean, just priority number one going into the offseason next year is going to be to build that offensive line for sure. Now, Lamar Jackson and this Ravens offense have the worst ranked throwing offense in the NFL, but they are a top five running offense. So we will see what happens today as we have to go up against a very good def defensive front with Calais Campbell at the helm. How long is he going to play in the NFL? It seems like he is ageless. Very, very good. But at least we have no injuries in practice going into this game. Another home game. How many home games do we have this season? And we'll see if we can get our second win today. But our main focus is really getting TPH, that dev trade upgrade. Like I said, we will play the moments in this game, so you will see us at different parts jump in. And here is a throw deep right away, and that is Lamar Jackson looking for Hollywood Brown, and Xavier Howard does knock it away. So we do get to play out this first drive, as here is Tua now backed up inside the 10. He gets out of the pocket, and he will take off for about a gain of seven yards. Tua does have the legs. Uh, I he doesn't have any superstar abilities or anything like that, so we will see what happens here as he develops throughout his career. Third and two now. Here's Tua. He finds Jalen Waddle, who's by himself. Busted coverage by the Ravens, and Jalen Waddle goes in for the touchdown. I said I wanted to get TPH the ball, but when Jalen Waddle is that wide open, how can you not get him the ball? Look at this coverage. It was just busted coverage. Marlon Humphrey, I think, just lost Jalen Waddle on the offensive side of the ball, and he just shows off that speed. He is so fast. It is 7-0 for the Dolphins. Well, it's looking good here on the first drive, but here's Lamar Jackson running the option here. He keeps it to the right side, breaking a tackle, fights forward. Touchdown, Justin Coleman has been a struggle this year. He, now... He can't tackle. If he would have made that first tackle, it was a game, uh, not a game saving touchdown, but tackle, but uh, at least a touchdown saving tackle. So now they go up 14 7, and here we are inside the five, trying to get in with TPH, but we get stopped now at the one. We go for it. We need four downs, but we do get in. It's a touchdown. Those get me really, really nervous because if we get stopped on three straight downs, the chances of us getting in on the fourth time is very slim. So here we go now. It's 21 to 14 as we're now into the late second quarter as here is Tua scrambling and tiptoeing. He gets pushed out of bounds before half. So we don't have to use a timeout there. A minute and a half to go. Here's a throw to the wide open Terrence Pitt Howard. He's got space throwing a stiff farm and it is a first down. So here is Tua now on the opposite side of the 50 for a first and 10 once again under center. The pressure's right there, but we get rid of it quickly, and there is Waddle taking off. There's the superstar ability at its finest. It's a touchdown. He just takes that one and doesn't lose stride at all and does get in for the touchdown as we move on to the second half. Jalen Waddle with two touchdowns. Here we go once again, threatening to score. Here's a throw to the right side. That is Gesicki for about a gain of six. This is a RPO this time, and it's going to be picked off. Now, this was 100% my fault on this one. I actually hit the wrong button. We meant to hand that ball off, but instead we ended up uh, hitting X to throw it instead of A to hand it off, and it ends up being an interception. And that turns out to be costly as the Ravens go back down the field and score right away. Now, this is one thing I was upset about in this game. They skipped us all the way into a minute left in this game. A minute, down 48 to 21. We didn't get one more opportunity to get into this game. The Ravens just absolutely jumped all over us, and it just ends up being a blowout. So now here we are with about 40 seconds left. Here is Tua, and he was not on the same page as Gesicki on that throw. As that brings it to a third and 10. Here's a quick throw. Waddle, he has it. That was a dangerous throw. Elliott was right there. So now at the 22, with 22 seconds left, Tua throws, and it's Jalen Waddle again, beating Marlon Humphrey. He is well over 100 yards this game. 
So here we go at the 11, throwing, and that is going to be another interception for Tua, and we will lose this game 48 to 21. Not the best effort by our team today, and we are now 1 in 10. It has hit a pretty much all-time low here. We have now 17 games in the schedule. <laughs> I mean, if we can't win four or five games and we have to draft number one, we have hit absolute rock bottom. All Madden is pretty tough this year. I don't want to use that as an excuse. I do make mistakes. I'm not a perfect Madden player, but some of these games are tough. Like if you make one mistake, that could be the entire game. Jalen Waddle at least had six receptions for 175 yards. He is absolutely going to run away with the receiving uh, yardage leader here in season number one. I think that he is just phenomenal, barring any injury. Lamar Jackson was held under that 75 yards, so we did hold true to that goal. Now, one thing about Terrence Fitt Howard is that he does get the dev trade upgrade. Now, the the what was the goal? It was to get... 100 yards or more or two plus touchdowns he had neither so i'm not really sure why he still got this but i'm guessing maybe it was something in the game or something i missed but as far as i know he did not achieve that but Jalen waddle does get an upgrade after that game and i definitely want to get up his route running i mean everything else is amazing i mean he just absolutely takes off i'm actually probably going to change his face too that's not what Jalen waddle looks like but then we have Terrence Pitt Howard, and he starts with eight upgrades. I believe it was seven upgrades, actually. So we start to upgrade all those. He even gets a plus one in speed, so that is pretty good. But for the most part, I decide to upgrade his power back, and he ends up being a 68 overall after those seven upgrades. So he goes from a 62 to a 68, just like that. So... You know, one thing about this is that we do still want to develop our staff points. We have been saving them up, but for the most part, we have not had any good games to even get there. And honestly, at this point of the season, I have been looking at our other staff members and I am not happy with our coordinators. I, and I'm just I'm just saying our offensive coordinator isn't bad. He has a couple of, you know, traits to him that could help. But our defensive coordinator is just probably not working out. We're sitting here at 1-9. and nine. I said 1-10. and 10. I meant 1-9 and nine earlier. But now we go up against the Jets for the first time this year. So we get to face Zach Wilson. And we will see what happens. We are on the road. But our defense definitely needs to step up. Giving up 48 to Baltimore. And honestly, folding versus the Texans. We had a couple of bad plays late. And we'll see what happens. Justin Coleman gave up a couple of bad plays in that Texans game. So we will probably look to use somebody else there in that nickel spot. I don't. I just don't think it's working out. Long episode today, but I appreciate you guys sticking the whole way through. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think about what we should honestly do here in the second half of the season. We can't make trades. We just want to play our young guys. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tino. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside, it's a war.